hello students um, we'll move to the next uh, topic now uh, i'll continue from where i left in the previous session i'll just quickly give you a review of what is there in chapter 1 so chapter 1 is about contract act indian contract act 1872 and it it covers um, what is a contract what are essential elements of a valid contract kinds of contract offer and legal uh, rules regarding a valid offer acceptance and essentials of a valid acceptance so we have completed uh, till here in the previous class today we'll look at what is consideration and essentials of a valid consideration exception to the rule uh, agreement made without consideration is void what is the meaning of consent when is consent free contracts expressly declared void discharge of a contract types of damages breach of contract and its remedies so let's go to the uh, go to today's topic that is consideration now we all know what is a contract uh, we all are aware uh, uh, a contract requires an agreement so we first come into an agreement and when it is enforceable by law it becomes a contract so if an agreement is made with legal conditions it is a contract so what is a consideration consideration is something in exchange so according to the section 2d of indian contract act 1872 consider is consideration is defined as when at the desire of the promisor the promisee or any other person has done or abstained from doing or does or abstains from doing or promises to do or abstain from doing something such act or abstinence or promise is called a consideration for the promise so this looks very complicated as a definition so in simple words a consideration is quid pro quo that is something in return so i'll just give a very simple example mr a uh, sold goods to mr b for rupees 5000 so uh, consideration means for mr a he is getting rupees 5000 and for mr b he is getting the goods so for mr a the consideration of the contract is equal to rupees 5000 and for mr b the consideration of the contract is equal to goods okay so um whatever we are getting in return okay is the consideration whatever we are giving is also the consideration in the contract now what is written here in the definition when at the desire of the promisor i'll just give an example let's say mr a mr b mr a sold uh, a bike to mr b for rupees 50000 this is the example so who is the promisor here mr a let's say mr a is the promisor who is the promisee mr b so mr a has promised that i will do something what he will do he will sell his bike similarly um Mr B has promised that I will pay you fifty thousand. So both of them are promising to do something. So to do something in exchange of something is called as consideration, or to not do something. Abstinence means not to do certain things. So you can also make a make a contract of not doing certain things. So I can I can tell that okay, um, you know if you make if you pay my bill, I will not file a case against you. i can make a contract like this also so where you are your consideration is the payment that you make and my consideration is that i will not file a case against you right so you are making the payment that is your consideration my consideration is what i will not do certain things so either doing or not doing but something in exchange is consideration now we'll go to the next uh, point what are the legal rules or essentials of a valid consideration how can you say whether the consideration is valid or not see consideration is must in every contract you can't uh, frame a contract or form a contract without a consideration and it must move at the desire of the promisor whoever is promising now how this whole situation happens i'll i'll give you one step by step example mr a Mr A is uh, has promised to Mr B okay that he will sell his bike to Mr B for rupees 50000 so Mr A is the promiser Mr B is the promisee 
okay and he said that he will sell his bike to mr b for rupees 50000 so now this consideration has to move from uh, at the desire of the promiser promiser must go and give the bike to mr b if he doesn't do that then the consideration is not valid and uh, the 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 consideration of the promise c which is 50000 rupees it could come from mr b or it could come from anybody so it is not uh, it is not compulsory who moves that particular promise so uh, the consideration for example if mr b decides that yes i want to give 50000 rupees to him so it is not compulsory for the promise c to go and pay it he can ask anyone he can on, he can do the online transfer also he can ask anyone to go and 50, give 50000 to mr a okay consideration may be past present or future it is also possible that we have done something in the past and that can be treated as a consideration now consideration can be present or consideration can be in future also that okay we will do it in the in the future so uh, it could be anything so for example past present and future if i say that okay i um, you know um, i had helped a person to you know uh, crack some exam and i did not charge any fees to him now uh, that person might consider that service of mine as a consideration and uh, in exchange he might give give me something he, he might give me something right so a consideration can be in the past in the present or in the future also okay consideration need not be adequate now one important thing is that uh, it is also possible mr a might sell the bike to mr b say for rupees 10 no one can stop it if mr a and mr b have agreed to do this transaction for rupees 10 which is very less no one can stop it because there is nothing like this both have accepted it so here it is not necessary that the consideration needs to be adequate it can be less it can be more also they can do a transaction mr uh, b can agree to uh, you know pay uh, 1 crore rupees also no one can stop it it can be more it can be less there is no rule regarding consideration how much it should be it must be real and not illusory it has to be real money it has to be real money now, it cannot be an illusion okay must be legal you cannot uh, give uh, old 500 rupees notes which were banned by the government you can't use that uh, consideration must be something other than public duty of the promisee so uh, if it is a public duty for example if uh, if someone is uh, you know uh, robbing a bank it is a public duty to uh, and if he has clicked a video of that incident it is his public duty duty to go and give it to the police he cannot uh, use that against the thief and tell that okay you give me money otherwise i'll show this video to you okay so this cannot be consideration right so these are certain essentials of a valid consideration now there is important term here exceptions to the rule no consideration no contract or on agreement without consideration is void now there is a standard rule as we said in the previous uh, slide the first point that consideration is must in every contract so that's what we are saying here an agreement without consideration is void if you make an agreement without consideration it becomes a void agreement now how to uh, there is a, there are certain exceptions exceptions matlab in 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 some cases uh, these uh, in some cases this rule of agreement cannot be framed formed with the without a consideration this statement becomes false in certain cases what are those exceptions natural love and affection now if someone is cooking some something for you like a, a person's mother is cooking some food or a person's wife is cooking something for food uh, like for with love and affection that cannot be considered as a consideration that agreement will also be invalid so love and affection has uh, an exception of consideration compensation for past uh, voluntary okay so uh, which means something which we have done voluntarily we cannot go and ask suppose someone's house was getting burnt and i went and you know i helped him uh, to mitigate the loss to reduce the fire i poured a lot of buckets of water uh, I, I tried to help okay so this is something which i did voluntarily now i cannot go and tell him that i saved your house now you pay me 10000 rupees you would have anyways uh, paid money to someone right 
so here what happens is uh, if i have done something voluntarily i cannot consider it as a consideration okay promise to pay a time barred debt now what happens in case of a debt uh, a debt has a limitation which means suppose uh, i sold goods to you on credit for rupees 1 lakh and i could not recover my 1 lakh rupees from you for at least 3 years after 3 years i am not eligible okay to collect money so here i cannot use that as a consideration next is gift already made now if if i have already gifted someone okay i cannot then expect okay give me something in return so here also consideration is invalid contract of agency if i am your agent i am doing activities for you i cannot run this consideration agreement to accept lesser performance of the promise now i told you that i will pay you 50000 rupees to get a bike but we made another agreement that i'll pay only 500 rupees this kind of a situation cannot come okay promise of contribution to charity uh, so here um, if an agreement is made where uh, you know there is a promise to contribute to the charity it can be made even without a consideration okay so for charity and all you don't need you don't need the other side of consideration got it so these are the exceptions to the rule no consideration now we'll see what is consent and free consent okay just a moment so consent and free consent so according to section 13 of the indian contract act um 1872 two or more persons are said to consent when they agree upon the same thing in the same sense now consent means uh where two people agree so if um in the example let's say mr a sold um is willing to sell his bike for rupees 50000 to mr b has mr a agreed for that transaction the answer is yes mr b is going to pay 50000 rupees has mr b agreed for that transaction if both have given free consent like an agreement is done if both of them agree then it is called as free consent so it is also called as consensus ad idem that means it means identity of minds or concurrence of minds if there is no contract there is then no valid contract can be if there is no consent there will be no call, valid contract can be created now what is what is this we'll understand in deeper uh, meaning free consent now everybody's consent should be free for from any pressure so if mr a uh, takes a gun and keeps it on the head of mr b and then tells him you know you have to sell your bike to me and i will pay you only uh, 100 rupees and you have to accept that 100 rupees so that means here my consent is there suppose i am threatening somebody my consent is there i am threatening somebody other person's consent is not there agreement is not there so here what happens this contract will get formed because the person in front is getting scared of me because he is getting scared of me he will say yes okay take my bike and give me 100 rupees and over contract is valid but it is been created without free consent of the person in front my consent is there because i am threatening i am using the gun but the person who is there in the front his consent is not there so what are the five ways where i can put a pressure on the person in front so the five ways by which i can put pressure on the person in front is coercion coercion means by putting pressure by threatening somebody so the the example which i gave is by putting a gun on someone's head and threatening somebody if i am scaring somebody that is coercion undue influence now i know that you are weak i know that you can't do certain things or i know some secret point of yours so i will tell that okay if you don't give me the bike for 100 rupees i'll tell your secret to everybody so that is taking undue influence okay fraud i can cheat you i can very well easily cheat you you'll not come to know and i've cheated you misrepresentation i can uh, create a document where i can take your signatures and i can cheat you so 
I my consent is there, your consent is not there. So the contract is done because you have signed on the paper. The contract is ready, but it is not with free consent. It is without free consent. And mistake sometimes mistakes happen. So mistake is the only way which is different, where we are not uh, do putting any pressure. But it is happening just because of mistake. It can be corrected. But the top four ways by which a wrong contract can be created without free consent is coercion that is putting pressure undue influence means taking advantage fraud means cheating misrepresentation is also cheating okay this is free consent now contracts expressly declared void there are some contracts which are void means for which we don't need to make an announcement that okay this is not allowed okay these are very well understood that these are void these are not allowed agreements made by incompetent persons now we have studied what is competent person competent person is someone who is above 18 years of age who is of a sound mind and who has never been disqualified by law okay so if incompetent contracts and in incompetent persons are making a contract it is it is void no need to declare so certain uh, you know uh, contracts are uh, expressly declared void so everybody knows that it is not valid okay agreement made under, made under a mistake suppose there is a mistake okay now i am showing you a black bike but you are seeing a blue bike and we made an agreement by mistake so that that uh, you know we don't need to declare it as void it is understood yeah okay mistake has happened if consideration or object is unlawful if we do something illegal object means aim if we do smuggling if we use uh, smuggled gold okay like if we use uh, some robbed money okay so that is illegal so there's no need to uh, make an announcement it is very well understood that it is void agreements made without consideration exceptions we saw but if there is no consideration then that agreement is void there's no need to declare restraint of marriage restraint of trade and restraint of legal proceedings there are certain uh, cases where you cannot make an agreement uh, of stopping a marriage so if mr a wants to marry uh, miss b okay if mr a wants to marry miss b he cannot uh, form a contract with uh, miss b that i will stop your marriage let's make a contract i will stop your marriage such kind contracts regarding marriage cannot be cannot be executed and these are expressly declared as void agreements in restraint of trade so suppose i already have a shop and you come to me and you tell that you know uh, uh, i want to open a shop nearby and i tell you that i'll give you 1 lakh rupees you should not open a shop here such kind of agreement is not possible okay it is illegal we can't stop anyone to do trade we can't stop anyone to do marriage we can't stop anyone to uh, you know uh, avoid legal proceedings if you have to pay a fine of let's say 5 lakh rupees i cannot make an agreement with you okay uh, i will help you in uh, paying only i will help you in removing the fine i'll do some cheating and everything so i can't i can't make an agreement against marriage trade or any legal proceedings there are some agreements which are uncertain uncertain means for which the uh, specificity is not there it is not clear what we are selling so just randomly we are there's no object there's no product wagering means uh, lottery anything which is speculative you can't such agreements are invalid agreements con contingent on impossible events so there are some events which are impossible now if i tell you that okay let us make an agreement that there will be an earthquake okay so that is impossible acts and impossible events we can't uh, create such incidents like someone is dead i we make an agreement that let us uh, see that that person is uh, alive again we we will do some magic and we'll make the person get up from his or her sleep such contracts are already void and there is no special announcement that is going to be happen to uh, declare it as void so these are certain uh, contracts which are expressly declared void okay now uh, discharge of a contract now here we need to understand how was a contract made okay so let's say i gave an offer i want to sell my laptop to you for 20000 you accepted the offer now it is a legal offer and legal acceptance the contract is made 
okay now the next step will be performance okay we have to actually go and do what we have promised so we have to actually i have to come and give the laptop to you and you have to come and give me the money so only this part is left where i am giving the laptop and you are giving me the money okay here the contract will get over fine this is all all how a contract works now which are different ways of ending a contract that means finishing a contract that means putting an end to a contract one of the ways i just gave an example is of performance so bus uh, i'll go and give the laptop you give me the money we did the performance contract is discharged over second is mutual consent here i will tell i don't want to give my laptop you will say okay no problems over wherein with a mutual consent we agree that we don't want to continue the contract subsequent or supervening impossibility or illegality now uh, there is a possibility that uh, certain contract which was possible earlier but it is not possible very simple i have uh, promised to give you my laptop and i have uh, you have promised that you will give me the money my laptop got damaged it is it is now fallen down broken and into pieces now earlier it was possible for me to sell this now it is not possible for me to sell this the only reason is that it does not exist so it is called as subsequent impossibility or subsequent illegality should like it was possible before but now it's not possible okay lapse of time sometimes an offer is made accepted but because time is not there anymore so the contract gets discharged there's no time left okay a lot of time has got wasted so i let's say i is uh, i told i want to sell you my laptop for uh, 20000 rupees that is today okay you accepted the offer and everything is there you are ready with money but i am not ready to give you the laptop okay and in this whole process two months have passed now two months you will say two months within two months the price of the laptop is further gone down it is not uh, 20000 rupees now worth it is for worth 15000 so what is happening because of lapse of time the previous contract of 20000 will get cancelled mobile phone prices change every day every day every day today it is worth say 10000 tomorrow it might be worth 6000 7000 we don't know okay so lapse of time time should be there operation of law means it should be legal uh, so what happens is sometimes the court will tell you end this contract you can't get into get ahead with the contract so sometimes legally it is not possible or the law will not allow you the example is uh, let's say uh, you gave me money uh, which was old money during demonetization as soon as the announcement announcement was made now it is no more legal breach of contract breach means someone one of us will break the contract either i'll i'll not give you the laptop or you are not giving me the money if the contract is breached then there are certain rules how to recover those but this is one way to discharge a contract okay so these are the ways with the help of which we can end a contract discharge a contract okay now once uh, the contract is broken contract is discharged or whatever there are there could be many damages now usually what happens the process is of breach breaching means not fulfilling the contract suppose i told you i will sell my laptop to you for rupees 20000 on the 1st of june 2021 right now uh, uh, i'll told you you come at this place i'll also come at this place we'll come and meet and do this transaction you came on that day i did not come so i breached i cancelled i could not now here what happens there are some damages which happen to you or else let's say i came and you didn't come so if you didn't come there are certain damages which happen to my uh, my laptop like my uh, contract so what happens i may have some ordinary damages ordinary damage means the price of my laptop which was fixed a couple of months back is now reduced okay some special damages might happen okay which means the the object is only now uh, broken or something or uh, uh, special damages as in uh, because you told that you will uh, you know uh, purchase my laptop i did not take a deal so my special damage happened some vindictive damage happened because i uh, agreed to sell my laptop to you someone else uh, uh, posted a loss against me claiming he put a case against me that he i had promised him to sell the laptop 
some nominal basic damages might happen my reputation might go down uh, so that is called as loss of uh, reputation damage for loss of reputation damage is for inconvenience and discomfort because of this i am now facing a lot of uh, inconveniences i am facing a lot of trouble so all of these are types of damages which means uh, i can file a case against you because you did not come there on that day to pay the money for my laptop all these damages must have happened to me and i will file a case against you asking for a damage asking for return of that money as a damage so then uh, you will have to make the payment for that so all these are types of damages with the help of which um, i can put a case against you i can claim my damages okay now breach of uh, breach of contract and its remedy so as i told you in terms of damages after breach we have damages so what is what exactly is breach breach means when when one of the party does not perform does not do the activities which were expected okay so failure of a party to perform the contract is breach okay like how i came with my laptop but y'all uh, didn't turn up so if you didn't turn up then there is a straight breach of a contract there is a straight loss and what remedies do i have what remedies so i have a remedy of following on the remedy what are the solutions that i have number 1 suit for specific performance now i can sue you i can sue uh, means i can file a case so when someone sues it is called as a suit okay so i can sue you i can uh, file a case against you i can sue you for specific performance now what does that mean what does specific performance mean specific performance means um, i can ask the court to force you to purchase my laptop i'll ask the court so court will force you to do that <laughs> now you don't have any other option but to make this purchase right so that is uh, first solution for me what that is that is come that comes as a remedy for me where i can ask you ask the court to force you to do this uh, performance okay suit for um, injunction okay now here i will ask the court uh, to give uh, give an alternative solution wherein um, i ask you to um, you know pay some money and uh, get it rid of get rid of this whole situation and uh, i can i can uh, ask you to sell my laptop to someone and whatever you you help me out injunction next is suit for damages for loss of sustained here whatever damages like what we discussed in the previous slide about damages i ask you to pay the damages that's it so uh, okay because of you you know my laptop price went down so you pay me 5000 i will recover 15000 from anyone so my laptop is now being sold for 15 you pay me 5000 so whatever damages happened you give me that okay uh, my reputation is gone give me 5000 more for that trip i anything can be claimed here okay and the final point is quantum merit now what happens Uh, here service example comes into picture so suppose i am writing a, po uh, a, a movie story for you i am i'm a writer of a movie story and you will you will pay me 50000 for the story now i wrote some part of it i almost wrote half of the story okay and then suddenly you are not telling that i don't want to i don't want to hire you i want to hire another writer so quantum merit means whatever work i have done whatever written work i will done i have done i will file a case against you that whatever written work i have done 50% of the work you pay me 50% for that and remaining work you get it written from someone else i don't mind but whatever work i have done for that much payment i want that is quantum merit so that the work that i have done i must be paid for that that is simple quantum merit so these are the remedies for breach of contract so uh, with this we come to end of chapter 1 i'll quickly run through what we have seen so far so as you can see with the index we have already uh, learned uh, what is a contract essential elements of a valid contract kinds of contract offers and legal rules regarding valid offer this this was done in the previous session acceptance and essentials of a valid acceptance today we did what is consideration essentials of a valid consideration exception to the rule agreement made without a consideration is is void consent and then we con contracts which are expressly expressly declared void discharge of a contract type of damages and breach of contract so we have studied all of this so 
uh, I want you to go through uh, the notes that are there. You can apply the learnings that you have received today. And we'll uh, continue with our next chapter in the next class that is laws of partnership. Just a minute. Okay. So, uh, thank you so much for listening to me patiently. I'll see you in the next class.